A continuous dynamical system, let's say with time represented by the variable t and state variable represented by x, so that x of t is a state at time t, such a continuous dynamical system can be represented by an autonomous differential equation. Let's say as a form dx dt equals f of x, where here the rule of the dynamical system is represented by the function f. This is a continuous dynamical system because x of t evolves continuously in time. There are no discrete time steps like in a discrete dynamical system. and write it as dx dt of t equals f of x of t. But usually we'll suppress that t and use a simpler form dx dt equals f of x. What's the simplest form for a function f of x? Well, we could have f of x just being a constant In that case, the differential equation would be dx dt equals c, a constant. What's a function whose derivative is constant? Well, that would be the function x of t equals c times t. The derivative of this function x is just c, so indeed dx dt is equal to c. In fact, we could add any other number, d, and the derivative of x would still be c. But let's not look at this case. That's too boring. Instead, let's look at the next simplest form for f. We could let f of x be a linear function. Let's say f of x equals r times x where here the parameter r is the growth rate, at least if positive. If r is negative, then the derivative dx dt is negative, so x is decreasing. In that case, we could call r the decay rate. So our linear differential equation, or linear continuous dynamical system, is dx dt equals r times x where we just plug this f into the differential equation. Can we find a solution to this differential equation? The solution means finding a function x of t, where if we differentiate, meaning we get dx dt, is the same thing as multiplication by the number r, meaning we get r times x of t. If x of t is a solution to this differential equation, it means that differentiation with respect to t must be the same thing as multiplication by r. So we require that these are the same. So for what type of function is differentiating with respect to t the same thing as multiplication by r? We can find the solution by guessing. For the exponential function, the function is its own derivative. So this means for e of t, differentiation equals multiplication by 1. But we don't want differentiation to be the same thing as multiplication by 1. We want it to be multiplication by r. So instead, we could try the function e to the power of r times t. In this case, by the chain rule, if we differentiate, we get an r that comes down, and so we get r times e to the t. And this is exactly the same as multiplication by r. So the function e to the r times t satisfies our differential equation. And in fact, if we let x of t equal any constant multiple of e to the rt, where c is just a number, this x of t will be a solution. Let's check that differentiation is the same thing as multiplying by r. 
Well, if we take x and differentiate, we get the derivative of x, which is c times e to the rt. And by the chain rule, when r comes down, we get c times r times e to the rt. On the other hand, if we take x and we multiply by r, we get x, which is e to the rt, times r. Differentiation is the same thing as multiplication by r. So indeed, x of t equals c times e to the rt is a solution of the differential equation dx dt equals rx. The general solution of the linear dynamical system dx dt equals rx is x of t equals c e to the rt. By general solution, we mean that all solutions have this form. For every number c, we get a different solution where we take that number c and multiply it by e to the rt. Now let's add the initial condition. Let's say we demand that x of 0 equals some number. Let's call that number x0. So if x of t is c e to the rt, then we know we've satisfied the differential equation. But we still need to satisfy the initial conditions, meaning if we plug in t equals 0, we need to get x0. What value of c will match the initial conditions? That's pretty simple. x of 0 equals c e to the r times 0, which is c e to the 0, or c times 1, or just c. And we need this to equal x0. Since we're free to choose what c is, any value of c will give a solution. We can just choose c equals x0. So that x of t is whatever the number x0 is times e to the rt. Then we've satisfied the initial conditions. So this is the specific solution to the differential equation coupled with the initial conditions. We call x of t equals x0 e to the rt the specific solution because it takes into account both the differential equation and its initial conditions. What happens to x of t as t gets larger? What's the behavior of the system? If r is positive, then x of t gets larger and larger as t increases. So if r is greater than 0, we get exponential growth. On the other hand, if r is less than 0, then x of t decays towards 0 as t gets larger and larger because we get e to the negative of a very large number, so it gets smaller and smaller. So we get exponential decay. Let's add a population of bacteria that was growing, where we represented the size of the population by b of t. We might have a differential equation of the form db dt is 0 0.8 times b. Let's say with initial conditions, b of 0, the initial population size, is 7. Then our solution, our specific solution, is b of t equals 7 times e to the 0 0.8 times t. Just using the general form here. Then indeed, b of 0 does equal 7. And we satisfied the differential equation that db dt equals 0 0.8 times b. And if we were to plot bacteria population size versus time, we would get some exponential function that looks something like this, where the initial condition is 7, and the population size just gets larger and larger as time increases. So this gives us exponential growth. Maybe a good model for the initial growth of a bacteria population, at least until its growth slows down because it runs out of food or space or something. We could also have a negative rate of change if, for example, we had disappearing rhinos 
well let's say h of t is the population size at time t. In that case the differential equation might look something like dh dt equals negative 0.1h with some initial condition, let's say of a thousand. In this case our solution h of t equals 1000 times e to the negative 0.1t. This solution exhibits exponential decay as the rhino population size is heading towards zero or extinction. In this case a graph of the population size as a function of time would look something like this with the initial condition of a thousand. Depending on whether we have positive or negative rate of change we get exponential growth or exponential decay from our linear differential equation.